Thanks for joining me on a quick lesson on finding the direction of the acceleration vector. Now, traditionally in physics, this uh, topic is discussed using vector algebra, you know, vector addition, vector subtraction, something you re might, might remember from a math class that you've taken at some point in the past. I'm going to try and avoid that in this lesson and teach you a quick trick for finding the direction of the acceleration vector. Of course, for a better understanding, you'll want to understand the vector algebra eventually, but for right now, you can use this method to quickly find the direction of any acceleration vector in a physics problem, and you can use it to check, of course, your vector uh, algebra if you're using uh, kind of a more technical way to find this um, vector. Now, to get started here, what I have to do is I have to actually teach you this first portion of a trick uh, kind of mechanically um, manipulating a vector. So remember, a vector is just an arrow. I mean, it's something that we point, we, when we draw in two dimensions, we draw it as an arrow. And vectors are, are said to have two quantities. Uh, in this case, a two-dimensional vector has some kind of a direction and some kind of a magnitude. The magnitude, of course, is the length. You know, I could measure something like this and figure out this length of the vector. That would be its magnitude. And the direction would be, I'd have to have some kind of uh, coordinate system for figuring out how it points. My point here is this, is if I want to change this vector that I have drawn here, I can either change its magnitude length or I can change its direction. Now, for my trick here, what I'd like to do here to make these changes to this vector is I'm going to treat the arrow of the vector as if it is a handle. I'm going to pin the other side of the vector so it doesn't move, and I'm going to grab the handle. Not the best hand drawing there, but grab the handle with my hand, and I'm going to use my hand to make changes to my vector. And so let's start about the first type of a change that I could uh, make to my vector. Let's say, in this case, I take the handle and I jam this vector in. What you'd notice uh, happening would be as I pushed on the vector, you'd get some kind of an effect like this. And you can see in pushing in on the vector, I could actually change its magnitude and make it shorter. And you kind of see uh, the, the key here is this. This end of the vector stays pinned. I'm not actually moving the vector. Uh, you could think of maybe the vector may, being made out of some kind of elastic material that it can push in on it, and it actually deforms itself shorter. Uh, there's another possibility. Let me go back to my original vector. My other possibility is I could grab the end of my vector and pull in the other direction. Uh, and essentially stretch the vector. Uh, as you might imagine, it would look a little something like this. So this is one way that I could apply a change to a vector. I could grab its handle and either pull, make it shorter by jamming in or pulling out and make it longer and make changes to the vector. Okay, we said that vectors have uh, two different qualities, though. They have this magnitude, which I've been changing in this case, but they also have direction. So we might apply the same sort of thinking and say, how could I change the direction of a, a vector? Going back to my original vector and remembering that as I uh, push or pull on this vector, this portion of the vector, kind of the tail of the vector, stays pinned to the whiteboard. Uh, I can push, in this case, I'll push down on the vector, and we'll see what happens. And you can see that uh, pushing down, uh, by grabbing the handle with my hand and pushing down, I can also change the direction of my vector. So, so what we're going to do is they're gonna, we're going to use this kind of a technique, kind of a mechanical procedure of grabbing the end of a vector and either stretching it, um, put, contracting it by pushing in or pulling off to one side or whatever to change the direction of the arrow. And we're going to use this as a trick to really quickly find uh, an acceleration vector for any physics problems we might be given. Now I'll start here by using a motion diagram for an object that's moving to the right and picking up speed. Just as a review, motion diagrams are show the dot, dots, show the position of an object at equal intervals of time. So if you can think of a clock ticking away, and uh, at each interval of time, you can kind of see here that the um, object is moving off to the right. 
And then um, these arrows here are, are actually showing the velocity of the object as it moves to the right. Now we could say that these were also displacements. In other words, for each interval of time, the object is found to be a little further apart. You can kind of see here. So therefore, its displacement is increasing. But we know that uh, velocity is a displacement with respect to time. So we could actually label these now as velocity vectors. And that's what I'm going to do for this. I'm assuming that you know a little bit something about motion diagrams. So if we call that our initial velocity of our object, uh, we could say that this is some later velocity of v1, then there might be a v2 and a v3, something like that. So that's where we're going to start from. Now the physics question comes in, in this uh, sense, is you're asked the direction of the acceleration vector for this problem of this object that's speeding up as it goes to the right. And we're going to use our little trick that we used before to find this acceleration vector. Now here's how it works. We look at any two vectors in the sequence. For simplicity, I'm just going to just focus in on these first two vectors here. Now, you don't have to necessarily move them. I'm going to draw them again down here just so I can um, uh, show you a little bit about what are, it's happening, what's happening here. But in this case right here, let's call this our initial velocity vector, our, our v0. And then right after that, that has a vector that looks a little something like this. And what we would like to be able to find here is our acceleration vector. Now, it turns out that this acceleration vector uh, up here uh, is associated with the change in velocity. So the definition of acceleration is the change in the velocity vector with respect to time. So what we really want here is the change in velocity. And so here's how I'm going to phrase this for each of these questions. What you'll do is you'll ask this question. What do I have to do to the first velocity vector to make it look like the second velocity vector? In other words, if I grab the uh, handle of my first velocity vector and I pull, push, do whatever I need to do with that handle to make it look like the next velocity vector, and in this case, uh, you can kind of see that what I have to do with my hand here is I have to pull out in that direction. And that vector right there is the change in velocity that I have to make to the first vector to make it look like the second vector. So for this first example, an object that is speeding up as it moves to the right, I can immediately say by looking at just any two subsequent vectors, I can quickly say that the acceleration vector for this first uh, situation points in this direction, and now I can kind of complete my motion diagram with the direction of the acceleration. We'll take a look at some other examples. For my next situation, I have an object still moving to the right, but now you see that the velocity vectors are decreasing in length as the object moves off to the right. And I ask this question is, what's the direction for my acceleration vector? Well, I use my same procedure in which I grab two um, subsequent um, vectors. In this case, they look like this. My initial vector might look like this. And my next immediately afterwards vector looks like this, my v1. And I ask myself the question, grabbing the handle of the first vector, what do I have to do with the first vector to make it look like the second vector. So I think I get, you get the idea now. What you're going to do is you're going to take that vector um, by the hand, that handle, and you're going to jam that vector in in this direction right here. And that's the direction of the change that you have to make to the first vector to make it look like the second vector. And as soon as you know the direction of that change vector, you automatically know the direction of the acceleration. So we can immediately say in the second example that the acceleration in this case points in this direction. And now we have the direction of the acceleration for our second example. All right, one more example of linear motion. In this case, you can kind of see the objects now moving to the left. Um, you can see that it starts with the initial velocity that's larger than the next velocity. And you might be asked the question, what's the direction of the acceleration vector? Why don't you pause the presentation now and go ahead and draw the uh, direction for the acceleration vector for our third example here. 
And for this third example, what we're going to do is I'm not going to draw hands anymore, but we're going to follow the same sort of a rule. You take a look at the first vector, v0, and say, what do I have to do to that vector to make it look like the next vector in the sequence? And it's pretty clear that I have to grab that handle and make that one short or jam it in like that. That's the direction of my acceleration. And you can see how fast for uh, these problems, how quickly you can define the direction of your acceleration vector for these types of um, physics problems. I'll give you some more challenging um, examples now. All right, for this example, let's, I've drawn uh, velocity vectors for, let's say, a ball that hits a wall. So you can see the initial velocity, the ball is going to the right. It smacks the wall and comes off in the opposite direction. Let's say it comes off at the same speed, and you're asked the question about the acceleration. Well, we know that even if it comes off at the same speed, if there's a change in the velocity vector, then there must be an acceleration. Go ahead and use the technique that I've uh, shown you to find the direction uh, for the acceleration for this collision, and then check back with the presentation to uh, check your answer. All right, and so in this case right here, you can kind of see is what, if I grab the first vector, say what do I have to do to the handle to make it look like that second vector? You can kind of see here that I have to I have to grab this handle and I have to push all the way through to here and then this far out on the other side, right, to turn the first vector into the second vector. And that is my change in velocity vector and that is also the acceleration vector, the direction for the acceleration for that collision. So notice this technique does a couple things. It not only gives you the direction for your acceleration, but it also helps you find the, that's our acceleration vector. It also gives you a kind of a feeling for the magnitude of it as well. You have to be a little more careful when you calculate the magnitude, but you can kind of see that this kind of a collision and a rebound involves a very large acceleration, just because of what you have to do to the handle of the first vector to make it look like the, vec uh, the second vector. Here's another more challenging uh, example. This might be a um, motion diagram for a ball tossed through the air. Quite a bit more complex of a problem, but we're going to use exactly the same technique to figure out the direction of my acceleration vector. And uh, in this case right here, why don't you go ahead and try that between the first two vectors. Ask yourself, what do you have to do to the handle of the first vector to make it look like the second vector? And then go ahead and check back for my response. So you can kind of see here that what I'm going to have to do is if I grab this first vector at the handle, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to jam it down on the handle until I can make my first vector look like my second vector. And see, now by pushing down on it, notice that I've kind of turned its direction and shortened it a little bit at the same time. And that is the direction of my change in velocity. That's the change that I had to make of the first vector to make it look like the second vector. That is the direction of my acceleration. So you can kind of see that this works for both linear problems, left and right, but it also works for uh, problems that are at angles. I'll give you one more for uh, practice. So these two sequential vectors might be a collision of a ball with a floor. So the velocity kind of comes down at an angle and then rebounds up at an angle. And the question is, what's the direction of the acceleration? Go ahead and uh, try this and check back with my solution. So we ask ourselves this question, what do I have to do with the handle of the first vector? In other words, keeping this end of the vector pinned in place, what can I do with the other end of the vector by grabbing it and making it look like the other vector? And I won't go through all, all of the individual steps now. I think you should get the idea here that what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to jam up on this vector right here and eventually get to the point where this thing now will point in this direction. And now my uh, initial vector looks like my final vector, which means I have applied this much change in velocity um, but that change in velocity is also called acceleration. And my acceleration in this case would point uh, straight up. And so you kind of see how this technique can be used to uh, solve problems in kinematics, also problems with uh, collisions. And I, I hope you'll find that along with the more mathematical approach to vector addition or vector subtraction to find your change vectors, 
that this will be a quick way to check your answers and have a kind of a more of a physical understanding of the direction of your acceleration for physics problems. Thanks for joining me.